What is happening, fifth grade teachers, students, and parents? It's Miss McCarthy here, and you want to know how to pass the math FSA, the fifth grade one. So I am here to teach you. Um, today we will be working on this standard. It's maths.5.oa.1.1, which today it's going to be lesson one, and we will be evaluating numerical expressions. Basically means we're going to solve expressions. That means they don't have an equal sign of numbers. And we will be doing PEMDAS. Some of you may know it as GEMDAS. I'm a little old school and I do PEMDAS. Um, so here's what we do. First we do parentheses. Then we would do exponents, but in fifth grade, we don't do it. So you won't see any exponents in this standard. You will see them when you're multiplying by 10 later on down the road, but for this standard, we will not be using exponents. Um, then we have multiplication and division, and when we're solving, we go from left to right, and then our next step would be to solve addition and subtraction, and again, once you get to that step, you're going from left to right. So, let me teach ya. Example one, what is the value of the expression? It says one-third times 54 minus 9 times 3, all in a bracket, which is very similar to parentheses. It is similar. Um, divided by 3. So our first step, we're going to work on our parentheses, or the bracket. Here's the bracket, so I'm going to bring this down first. Now, inside of the bracket, I have more than one operation going on. I have subtraction, and I have multiplication. And according to PEMDAS, I would do multiplication first. So my first step is going to do not to be 9 times 3, which is 27. Okay, then I'm going to bring this down, 54. I'm going to bring everything down, actually. Some of you like to jump ahead and do all of it in your head, and that is where you make mistakes. Okay, so I still have parentheses, but now I am at, or subtracting, I'm sorry. 54 minus 27 would be 27, and because that's the only number left, I'm now going to take that out of my parentheses, divided by 3. Okay, so now we have 1 third times 27 divided by 3. So I have multiplication and I have division. So which one do I do first? Because they're on the same line. This is where we go from left to right. Just like you read a book or a passage from left to right, you're going to now solve this problem from left to right. So 1 third times 27 would be 27 divided by 3, and then we're taking that and dividing it by 3. 27 thirds would be 9. 9 divided by 3 equals 3. So our answer is 3. Since you are taking the computer-based test this year, um, you will see an equation editor that looks like this. And what you would do is just punch in three and move on to the next problem. All right, so we're on example two. And example two says, what is the value of the expression? I've written the expression down right here. And I see two sets of parentheses. So where do I start? Well, really, you can just start by solving them both out. And I like the left to right method, so that's what I'm going to do. So left to right, I've got five minus three, and I know that it is subtraction within there, but really our first step is parentheses. So it's okay to go left to right like this. All right, so five minus three equals two. 100 divided by five equals 20, and now I'm gonna bring down all the other numbers and symbols. So seven times, and then my plus sign. So now I've got multiplication and addition, and I need to go to multiplication next because again, I don't have exponents. So I'm gonna do 14, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Seven times two, which is 14, bring down my plus 20. 14 plus 20, now that's my addition step and all that I have left would be 34. So in my equation editor, I'm going to write in 34, but again, you'll take a computer-based test and you would punch in 34. Move in right along to example three. It says select all the expressions that have a value of 10. This is a multi-select problem because it says to select all the problems. So I need to solve each one out and see which one has a value of 10. So let's do it. 
All right, so first I've got two sets of parentheses here. This is A. Um, so I'm going to solve them, and I'm going to go from left to right as well here. So, so 8 times 9 is 72. 4 times 3 is 12. When I subtract them, I get 60. So this is not, this expression does not have a value of 10. B, I've got, again, two sets of parentheses. I'm just going to solve them both out. 100 minus 50 is 50. 1 half times 10 will be 10. 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and 50 divided by 5 will give me a value of 10. So B is one of our answers. C, I've got parentheses, parentheses. I'm going to solve those first. 3 times 1 is 3. 6 times 1 third would be 6 over 3, which would be 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And I'm going to bring down my um, symbols and my numbers. Now I've got addition and multiplication. Multiplication comes first. So 2 times 3 is 6. Bring it down. And 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 is close to 10, but it is not 10. All right, D. Here I have brackets going on. Um, those are very similar to parentheses, so we solve them accordingly. And within the brackets, I have multiplication, subtraction, and multiplication. So I know that I need to multiply first. I'm going to multiply going from left to right. So 12 times 5 is 60. 2 times 20 is 40. And I'm bringing that subtraction sign down. I'm going to keep the brackets for right now. Bring down my 1 half and my multiplication sign. Now I have 60 minus 40 that I'm solving in parentheses because I'm still at that step. 60 minus 40 is 20. Bring everything down. 1 half times 20 would be 20 over 2, which is like 20 divided by, you can't see that, 20 divided by 2, which equals 10. So D is an answer choice. Let's solve E. All right, I've got two sets of parentheses. Let me start there. 7 and 4 plus 3 is 7. Now that they're out of parentheses, I can add them. So 7 plus 7 equals 14, which is not a value of 10. Okay, example 4. It says an expression is shown. 1 fourth times 6 minus 2 plus 1. Create an equivalent expression that includes a set of parentheses so that the value of the expression is 2. So basically what I have to do here is rewrite this expression, but I need to include a set of parentheses in it. And parentheses are important because that changes the order that you um, work out a problem, which could then change the value. So we need to see where we can plug in parentheses to get a value of 2. So I'm looking here, I put a couple examples up on the board because I'm going to try to work it out. Um, let's see, so what if I were to put my parentheses here, okay? That would mean that I would have to solve 1 fourth times 6 first. So 1 fourth times 6 would be 6 fourths there. I'll reduce it in a little bit because I can because they're both even. And I bring everything else down. Okay, so now we need to go from left to right because I have a, a subtraction and addition, and I do that in order from left to right. So I'm going to do 6 fourths minus 2 fourths. Well, I can't do that. I need to get a common denominator. So 2 would be equivalent to 4. Oops. If I have fourths as my denominator, I need 8 on top because 8 divided by 2. 8 divided by 4 equals 2, and then adding 1, 6 fourths minus 8 fourths. I can't do that. That's getting into negative numbers, and you don't learn that yet. So this would not work. Okay, so this is a, a non-example. No. Let me try somewhere else. What if I put my parentheses here so that I'm solving 6 minus 2 first? Well, 6 minus 2 would be 4. And 1 fourth times 4 plus 1, when I bring everything down, now I have multiplication and addition. 
Multiplication comes before addition. So 1 fourth times 4 would be 4 over 4, which equals 1 plus 1, and that gives me 2. So there's my way, it's my expression, that when I solve it and put the parentheses there, I would get a value of 2. So I need to rewrite this in my equation editor box. So this is what I would write. I would not write the answer to. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for where I can include a set of parentheses. So what goes into the equation editor is actually the equation that I created because it says to create an equivalent, I'm sorry, not an equation, um, create an equivalent expression. I don't have an equal sign. So to do that, I would write 1 fourth times 6 minus 2 in parentheses plus 1. And here's the deal. Your test is not going to be paper-based for most of you. It's going to be computer-based. So to do this, you would click this little fraction thing. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little fraction bar. It looks like this. You click that, and then you would put 1 on top, 4 on the bottom, do a multiplication sign. Put up a set of parentheses, and then in the parentheses write 6 minus 2, parentheses again to close it, and then add 1. That is how you solve this problem. Okay, so we're on example five. It's our last one for today. It says a numerical expression is evaluated as shown. We have two times, in parentheses, three plus five times six, close your parentheses, minus one. Um, and then they give me a list of steps that somebody did to solve the problem. It says in which step does a mistake first appear. So there might be more than one mistake going on, but where does the first one appear? So I see that they went from this. Now looking at it, our first step should have been to solve in the parentheses, and that would be 5 times 6 because we have addition, we have multiplication, and we know that multiplication comes first in the order of operations. So they would do 5 times 6 first, which this person did brought the 3 down, brought the 2 down, brought the minus 1 down. So step 1 looks good. All right, so moving on to step 2. Next, we still have parentheses that we need to address. So 3 plus 30 would be 33. And that is correct. They did the next step correctly. They brought down the 2. They brought down the minus 1. So step 2 is correct. Where is the mistake? All right, next. We have multiplication, we have subtraction. Multiplication should come first, so 2 times 33 would be 66, but that's not what this person did. They did 33 minus 1 first and got 32. So step 3 is where the first error was made. So C is your answer. All right, everybody, before you leave, let me leave you with a motivational message. This one says, every accomplishment starts with a decision to try. What do you want to accomplish? Is it that you want to get all A's? Is it that you want to learn how to juggle? Is it that you want to, uh, I don't know, run a marathon, run a half marathon, run a 5K? You have to make the decision to try.